it is fair to say that we're experiencing a she session because this has had such a disproportionate impact on women and mothers in particular, right? It hasn't impacted all women equally, but moms and women of color especially have been the ones who've really been hit the hardest. Prior to the pandemic, my children were full-time in school. Once COVID hit, I was getting a uh, like this feeling that things were about to change, and I decided to leave the job. Maxine is a mother of four boys, ages nine, eight, five, and three. Before the pandemic, she worked as a lactation consultant, assisting new mothers. She left her job in 2020 because of the threat of coronavirus in her hospital work. I think there's always been an understanding with my husband and I that he was the primary breadwinner. Whatever work I was going to be able to do, I needed to fit it in so that I can be the sole care provider. So I, I set up a lot of things in a way where I am that person. I've become kind of like the teacher and the principal and the disciplinarian, but also the reward giver for when they do well in school. You said you voluntarily left the workforce a little bit like right before the pandemic. What was your thought process there? Why did you choose to? I got my degree in health education and one of the first things we talk about are, are pandemics and you know epidemics and what that means. I understood that there was going to have to be someone that was going to have to be present. I knew that my husband has a profession that is also considered an essential worker and we both at that time could not be essential workers and so I voluntarily let go. Hey, what do y'all do every Thursday? Um, we get COVID tested. We get COVID tested. Yeah, every Thursday. COVID tested. Oh, hey! Y'all want some hand wipes today? Maxine is just one of at least two million women who have left or lost their job during the pandemic. What we see now is there's about two million fewer women in the labor force now than there were at the beginning of 2020. And more than a third of those are mothers, right? So of school-aged children. Sarah Jane Glynn studies gender and the economy. She says that the United States is seeing a she-session, an employment economic fallout disproportionately affecting women. Folks may remember back to the Great Recession, which wasn't that long ago, that sometimes got referred to as a man session because the sectors that were most hard hit then were jobs that disproportionately employed men. And we're seeing the reverse of that happen now. From February to May 2020, 11.5 million women lost their jobs compared to 9 million men, a disproportionate economic downturn of job and income loss for women. In the absence of daycares, in the absence of in-person schooling, in the absence of after-school programs, camp, things like that, people have just decided, and by people, I mostly mean moms, have decided, I just can't do it all. So I'm gonna have to focus on taking care of my kids because there's just not enough hours in the day for me to do everything that I'm responsible for. And while that might feel like a good option for some people in the short term, it has really serious economic consequences, both for individual families and for the economy writ large. During the pandemic, workforce participation for women has dropped as low as 57%, the lowest level since 1988, according to the National Women's Law Center. The loss of jobs can impact future earnings for women, including pensions and retirement plans. Women have been an incredible driver of economic growth in this country. And if we send women back in time to the same labor force participation and employment rates that we saw in the 70s and 80s, we're gonna be undoing all of this progress that has helped our economy grow. Historically, men and women dominate different sectors with women-dominated industries sometimes referred to as pink-collar jobs, including education, social work, events and hospitality, and healthcare. Women are the majority of our nurses. They are the majority of our physician assistants, our pharmacy assistants, our grocery clerks. You know, born of farm workers were still out in the fields picking food so the rest of us could eat as we were all quarantined. Um, and they needed the protections at the time. They didn't get it. Women are overrepresented in the hospitality industry, in the restaurant industry, you know, in those places that really got shut down and were hard to sit where you can't remote work. And so women, you know, lost their jobs. Tina Chen is the president and CEO of Time's Up. Time's Up works to combat gender-based discrimination in the office. 
The foundation says sexist and racist workplace and childcare policies have amplified gender-based employment inequity, leaving the U.S. care economy ill-equipped to support women and mothers who seek to work, a problem further amplified by the pandemic. In April, more women left the workforce than those that rejoined. What do those numbers say to you and signal to you? Well, they signal a crisis with schools out, you know, with childcare centers closing, with an inability to access home care services for the elderly and the sick, the lack of any paid leave or sick leave to hold down your job while you're managing all these crises. It has now reached an epic proportions. So in a single year, as you point out, we wiped out three decades of progress on women in the workforce. And if we don't address this particular crisis right now, the economy that we build back is going to leave out women. In the United States, there are no federal legal requirements mandating paid sick leave, a policy that largely supports those who are ill, caretakers, or expecting. We're the only advanced economy that doesn't guarantee any parents that right to paid leave. That does not make sense coming from such a wealthy nation. And we also just need greater investments in childcare overall. Glynn also says a comprehensive care economy would protect low-wage and hourly workers with a livable minimum wage. Women are overrepresented in the low-wage workforce, making up 58% of occupations, paying roughly less than $11 an hour. Most minimum wage workers are adults. Many of them have at least some college education already. Many of them are parents. And a lot of them are heads of household who are supporting their families on incredibly low wages. As vaccines allow for economic reopening, the job gains remain disproportionate, with Black, Hispanic, and young workers experiencing the highest levels of unemployment. In Maxine's case, she worries her voluntary exit from the workforce, in addition to gaps in employment history due to four pregnancies, will impact her future earnings. I do feel like after the pandemic that it will affect my employment and my earnings. After a year and a half, as in-person schooling returned, Maxine sought work that allowed her to support her kids' hybrid schedules. I was applying for things that I knew that I was able to do in the time frames that I was able to do it. And so my availability maybe wasn't something that was what employers were looking for. And so they just right off the bat were like, no, 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 no. I'm not really concerned that I won't ever be able to work. I am also a very humble person. I'll work at the grocery store. Am I gonna be paid? well for that? No, I'm usually going to be paid a lower amount of money. Um, but if you take a job that's a little bit more humbling, I may have more flexibility to be with my children and be with my family more. Projections estimate that employment for women may not recover to pre-pandemic levels until 2024. That's two full years after men are expected to recover. I have never seen the awareness in the private sector and in public policymakers that I, you know, that we have today. You know, it is a 180 degree turnaround from 12 years ago when everybody said, not my problem, to now realizing this is everybody's problem. So we have a generational opportunity to make transformational change in how we organize our workplaces, to really bring the American economy into the 21st century in a way that will support caregivers and every worker, you know, up and down the wage scale in every industry. That includes workers like Maxine Robinson. Has the pandemic changed anything about how you view motherhood or just being a working woman? I think the pandemic has um, helped me to see that because the mom is so important in the household with the children and spouses or extended family, that if you don't take care of yourself, there's no way that you're gonna be able to take care of anybody else.